Okay, hello everyone. This is Principles of Management, Chapter 3. Uh, this is uh, Part 2 of the lecture for Chapter 3. Uh, we just got done speaking about our, our, our handshake and making a good first impression. And then you guys are going to go ahead and uh, review your discussion questions uh, with, your, with whoever your favorite person to review your discussion questions uh, with is. Uh, they are, are very beneficial. Don't just uh, uh, skim over them. Uh, they will help you have some insight uh, towards this class as well as insight towards, uh, towards the workplace. So work attitudes. Attitude, I'll tell you right now, it, it's everything. Uh, attitude refers to opinions, beliefs, and feelings about aspects of our environment. Attitude is almost always communicated, whether consciously or unconsciously, in speech or body language. And I will tell you that if body language says one thing and my mouth says something else, trust my body language. Uh, some important questions to ask yourself. What does your attitude communicate? I think my attitude uh, communicates one of, of joy, happiness, excitement, and uh, you know that's what I, I try and uh, uh, come off uh, with. Uh, maybe sometimes not successful, uh, but I believe that I have a, a good attitude, a good positive attitude. Is there a relationship between your attitude and your behavior? Yes, of course there is. Uh, you need to have a, a good type of behavior uh, to or attitude to come in and behave as an individual who likes the workplace, even when maybe it's not the most likable place. Uh, factors of job satisfaction and commitment, right? You want to be satisfied with your job. You want to like what you're doing. Uh, you don't want to just every morning you wake up and say, oh, I can't believe I have to go back into this place. You don't want to be that person. So your personality, uh, which could make you a good fit, uh, say, you know, a person with a, a good uh, extroverted personality is an individual who do well in the workplace. Uh, person environment fit. So if you don't fit within the environment, right, it's this young hip environment and I'm old and, and set in my ways, then no, I'm not going to fit and I'm probably going to have a terrible time. Job characteristics, certain characteristics about the job that may or may not jive with me and my personality. A psychological contract, meaning that uh, it's not a written contract, but I, I believe that I have a psychological contract with my manager to say that Demetrius is going to do whatever it takes and whatever he needs to do within the realm of you know ethical business behavior to achieve the desired results. I really do uh, care. I don't want to be the individual that, uh, that, that fails. I want to be the individual that succeeds. Organizational justice, work relationships, type of relationships that you have with people. If you hate everybody at your job, you're probably not waking up in the morning saying, I can't wait to go to this place and sit here with all these people that I truly hate. And then stress. How do you handle stress? Uh, there are different types of stress. You have eustress, which is spelled E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S. -S. So eustress is good stress. I catch, uh, you know, it's the last play of the, of the football game, and I catch, uh, I catch the ball at the 50-yard line, shake and bake, and I get into the, uh, the end zone. I score the winning game-winning touchdown. That's eustress. Makes me perform better. Uh, distress is me. Uh, you know, being stressed out about a, a project at work that I simply don't have the solutions or answers to. Uh, so you want a lot of stress in your life. Uh, you want to try and diminish the distress. Uh, a job that fits. And we all should and want to uh, strive towards a job that fits. Uh, personal organization fit refers to the degree to which a person's personality, values, goals, and other characteristics match those of the organization. Person job fits uh, the degree to which a person's knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics match the job demands. A good fit uh, jointly determined uh, by the individual and the situation, right? So the individual plays a part in the situation, also plays a part in making this a good job fit. Uh, organizational justice and psychological contracts, which you kind of touched on already. Uh, organizational justice can be classified into three separate categories. Procedural. Uh, fairness in the way policies and pr processes are carried out. Uh, you'd be surprised at how uh, much people uh, care and consider uh, the fact that their manager is being fair or not being fair. Uh, distributive, that's the allocation of resources or, or compensation and benefits, right? So you got to be fair in that, that regard too. Uh, you know, you, you want to pay for uh, for performance. Those people who perform well should should be compensated. Those people who don't should not. Uh, interactional, the uh, interactional, uh, the degree to which people are treated with dignity and respect. You should treat everybody with dignity and respect, no matter what their position is. Uh, that's just the right thing to do. At the root of organizational justice is trust, something that is easier to break than to, than to repair if broken. Uh, it's really tough 
uh, especially when upper management breaks the trust of those individuals, uh, a lot of times they'll never ever trust uh, upper management again. And the psychological contract is the unspoken informal understanding that an employee will contribute certain things to an organization and will receive certain things in return. So I'll receive a certain amount of compensation for going in every day and giving my 110% because I truly care about what goes on in the organization. Assessing attitudes in the workplace, uh, attitude surveys uh, used to track employees' work attitudes. Uh, they're better if they're kept confidential, right? So you don't want some manager who's sometime in regards to their attitude to figure out that you said some, you know, some bad things about his performance, uh, probably do, you know, because his performance probably is terrible, and uh, now he has an attitude towards you. So that's one of the reasons why we want to keep things confidential. Uh, success of these uh, surveys depends on the credibility of management uh, in the eyes of the employees. Uh, and exit interviews. Exit interviews will tell you a lot of information that you need to know uh, throughout the human resources department and also as a manager and upper management. Uh, so you want to meet with uh, depart departing employees, right? So these are people that are leaving on their own accord. I'm leaving the company. I got a better position. We're going to have an exit interview and I'm going to tell you why I'm leaving the company. Uh, if conducted well, uh, may give management clues about areas uh, for improvement. All right, so you want to look at that exit interview. You just don't want to throw in that person's file because you're never going to open their file up again unless they boomerang back and come back to the company. Uh, but what you want to look at it and, and find out, hey, are there any things that we can work with this specific manager? Because I see that people keep leaving and they keep leaving because of this reason. Uh, so more uh, fabulous discussion questions uh, that I want you guys to review and uh, bounce off of each other and uh, see what different types of answers uh, you come up with. Uh, work behavior and job performance. So the following table lists some of the factors uh, that have the strongest influence over work behaviors. So for your job performance, you have general mental ability. How much mental ability do you have? Organizational justice and interpersonal relations. relations. Uh, stress. How much stress are you under? Uh, I would say I'm under a, a good deal of stress, uh, but I would say I, I manage it well. Or at least I think I do. Uh, positive work attitude. I think I have that as well. As well. And uh, you know, it's always good to have a good personality. Organizational citizenship behavior, organizational justice and interpersonal relations, personality, positive work attitudes, and age, right? So they say as you get older, uh, you're less apt to uh, do things that are unethical. Uh, absenteeism, and this is a no-no, this is not a good place to be, don't be in this column. Uh, if you have health problems, and you know, health problems, you can't, can't do anything about that, but uh, have a proper uh, work-life balance issues, or if you have work-life balance issues, uh, there's too much, too much life going on, or if it's too much work, either way, it's, it's, not, it's not good. Uh, negative work attitudes, uh, so if you're always coming to the office and you're negative every single day, first thing in the morning, you need to take a look in the mirror you need to figure out what you need to do to fix that. Uh, and your age, uh, sometimes younger people are like, hey, you know, I got, I've just got something better to do. Sometimes in life, if you got, if you got options, then, then you make a lot of, of bad decisions. Uh, and turnover, low performance, right? So this is people who, who leave the company. Uh, low performance, negative work attitude, stress, personality, younger employee, and shorter tenure. You know, we just live in, a, in an environment these days where, where people aren't staying at a company 30, 40 years. Uh, that was back in yesteryear in, during your parents' time. Uh, now, some companies, they do, and that, that's really good. Uh, but a lot of companies don't, and they expect, hey, hey this person is going to be here a maximum of five years, and they're going to move on and move on to something else. Uh, more lovely discussion questions. I want you guys to check those out. Uh, be sure to review them and learn from them. So developing your personal skills. You always want to continue to develop your own skills. You never want to be complacent and not learn. Funniest thing I tell everybody all the time is that I always learn something new from every single class that I teach. Not every class that I take, but every class that I teach, I learn something new. Whether it be from the textbook, even if I've read the textbook five times, I read it the sixth time, and I learn something new. Or I may learn something new from the students, which is always a great thing. Uh, research shows that uh, acting positive at work uh, can actually help you become happier as over time as emotions can be influenced by actions, right? What a coinky dink. Uh, and, you know, I, I can guarantee if I told some people this that, you know, that they would say, well, no, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to change anything for me. And that's what they believe. And, you know, I'm not going to ever uh, waste uh, my breath continually trying to, to change someone uh, from a negative individual to a positive individual. When they want to change, they definitely will change. Me, you, 
anybody else, we're not going to be uh, the component or the, the main factor of their change. So six suggestions uh, for finding work satisfaction. Uh, get accurate information about the job and the company, right? So I was just one company, and they wouldn't let me see the people who I was going to manage, and they wouldn't let me see the system that we were going to work on. Well, uh, they wouldn't let me see the people because the people were kind of cuckoo, and then uh, then they wouldn't let me see the system because the system was like a 1970s DOS system. Uh, you want to develop good relationships at work, right? So you want to have good relationships, not too good relationships at work, but you want to develop good relationships, people, uh, good working relationships with uh, good people. Uh, be proactive in managing organizational life, right? Proactive is always better than reactive. Uh, know when to leave. Know when it's time. When it's time to, to as Kenny Rogers says, we know when to uh, roll, know when to fold them, right? Sometimes it's time to just fold those cards and just say, I don't want any more. Uh, I want to go ahead and uh, hit the exit button and, and exit stage left. Uh, leverage your big five traits and a good fit with the job and company are important to your happiness. So if you're if it's not a good fit, then you know continue to look and, and look somewhere else and and don't just stay somewhere where it's not uh, an adequate fit for you. And more lovely discussion questions, for instance, do you believe that your own happiness at work is in your hands, right? So if you're, if you're negative, you're going to say, no, it's not in my own hands, it's my boss's hands and everybody else's hands. But if you're positive, you're going to say, yeah, I believe uh, that it is. I have good, uh, what you call, locus of control. I feel like I control, uh, you know, my destiny. I feel like what I do actually has an effect on what comes back to me and I, I truly do believe that so that's it for chapter three hooray give yourself a hand uh so uh next week uh you you move on to chapter four and uh the, the weeks will definitely fly by uh, i can tell you right now uh if you watch the lecture and you read the book and you go over the things i tell you to go over you'll definitely be successful in the class so as always have a good day and a great week